Good day and welcome to our Biomechanics and Injury Prevention Training Program. My name is John Gamble. I am the Environmental Health and Safety Director at the College of Agriculture here at Kansas State University. Joining me today is Dr. Eric Belander, physical therapist with Via Christi Therapy Center in Manhattan, Kansas. Eric graduated from the University of Nebraska Medical Center with a doctorate in physical therapy and is a certified work capacity evaluator. Today, Eric will provide us guidance on material handling and proper lifting techniques in an industrial environment. Please consider adding these instructional tools to your daily work activities. Thank you, John. Yes, I am a physical therapist and a main part of my job is to uh, treat injuries and another big part of my job is to educate on injury prevention and that's what I want to talk about this morning. So as the physical part of the job description, you're required to have the ability to lift up to 60 pounds, climb ladders, and operate a pallet jack with up to 2,000 pounds on it. That puts you in the heavy workload here, which is the ability to uh, apply 50 to 100 pounds worth of force on an occasional basis or 25 to 50 pounds on, an, on a frequent basis. Back injuries are the leading cause of time off of work and nearly 25 percent of people ages 18, 18 through 44 report back pain in the last three months and that is of general population and research shows that people who work in a heavy work capacity have a higher incidence of back injury. So that's why we want to bring up um, particularly back injury for this uh, lesson today. The main causes of back injury are high repetitions of bending, lifting, or twisting, exerting excessive force when lifting, pushing, pulling, or carrying, poor workstation setup, or lacking the physical qualities required for the work task, such as strength, flexibility, or stability. And a big one that we want to discuss is poor body mechanics. Some ways that we can prevent injury would be stretch the back and the legs. A lot of what we do, or most of what we do, is out in front of us. So a lot of times we're kind of bent over or we're sitting so the muscles that put you into flexion get tighter than the muscles that get out, go into extension. So one of my favorite exercises to stretch that out is to kind of undo any of the tightness or the potential damage that the work activity has done. So a big back stretch such as this or to get an even bigger one to put your hands up over your head and stretch the entire spine out Another one, you want to keep your, your legs nice and loose and be able to get your weight down low. So just bending over to touch your toes can be a good one. And then kind of warming up into a deeper squat like this can warm up your hips and your back. Ask for assistance if the activity is too heavy. So if you have a partner helping you with the lift, then you essentially just have to do half of that load. Take rest breaks. We would much rather have you um, take care of yourself, prevent an injury, and uh, than, than hurt yourself trying to keep up with the demands. Pull rather than push. In general, our pulling muscles are a lot stronger than the pushing muscles, uh, particularly with the upper body. So anytime you can pull something towards yourself, and have a little bit better control of it, that's a good way to prevent injury as well. Avoid sudden jerking movements. This can result in strains or sprains, um, pulled muscles, uh, some back injuries or shoulder injuries, lots of different things. And then use the proper body mechanics, which we'll get into a little bit more. So hopefully this is a review for most of you, and you've heard this before, but um, the number one rule with body mechanics, particularly lifting, is lift with your legs, not your back. So this guy here is doing exactly what we do not want to do. Um, he is 
having a huge curve of the spine and using his legs very minimally. So the way that I advise people is to get your hips down low, like this guy, and uh, let your legs, which have a lot more powerful muscles than the back does, let them do the lifting. Now, not everybody has the flexibility to, to get down in that really low squat, especially if you're getting something completely off the ground. So sometimes keeping your weight down low and taking a knee, this can prevent a back injury too. This way you have the ability to get down low like this. You pull it to yourself and then stand up. So we would much rather have you do that than just a lift from the floor like this. Keep the loads close to your body. So when we look at this character here, <clears throat> the weight is one pound away, or one foot away from his center of mass, and that puts him at a torque on the back of 40 foot pounds. When you start to reach away from your body, so this character has three feet, there's, there's three feet away from his center of balance, um, so that's three feet times 25 pounds, and that puts 75 pounds of foot torque, or foot pounds um, of torque on his back. Avoid twisting. So uh, the mechanics of the back are pretty interesting because you have all of these different segments uh, that are flexible and able to move. Um, <clears throat> But uh, so you have the flexibility to move and to reach different things. Um, but the way the spine is really intended to work is it the the stabilizing muscles that connect these little prongs or the facet joints. Um, they they work to stabilize the spine into one firm, rigid piece, so that your arms and legs are the ones doing the power and your back is one solid piece. When you twist, it kind of interrupts that stability and uh, it creates more potential to injure, those, uh, injure the back. I try to teach people to stay within their power zone. So that's as close to their center of balance as possible. Um, it's much safer that you can move and manipulate weight uh, when you're staying at a neutral spine. So this, this guy has perfect posture, very straight up, everything is very stable. Um, when you start to get out of that work, or out of that power zone, uh, the stability starts to be compromised. Also, listen to your body. Uh, oftentimes, a small twinge of pain can evolve into a more serious injury. Um, at the time that you start to notice it, it might seem like an insignificant thing, but if the, the stresses that are kind of aggravating things uh, continue, it can evolve into a much more serious injury. So hopefully you can apply these concepts into your work life and into your daily life to prevent injury, take care of yourself. Um, next we are just going to go across and demonstrate some of the activities that um, are required for the job and some ways to keep safe. I'm at the hand out area now. So first approach the bag, keep it very close to your body, get your hips down low, and when you stand up keep the weight close to your body, pull it to yourself, and then move your feet rather than twist the spine to put it down. And then be careful when you put it down too because that's an area that you can also injure yourself. You want to use the same body mechanics. Start with the hips, stick it down. Very good. Okay, we're in the pre-mix area where you'll take buckets of ingredients and mix them onto the scale over there. For your safety, the top shelf has not been used because that's clearly out of that power zone reaching up here which I'm taller than a lot of people too, so even that would be quite a strain for me. So we try to keep things in the power zone here. Um, also for your safety, we have put the heavier items down on a little cart. But the body mechanics that I wanted to discuss here, um, I'll use this bucket here. You want to keep your body aligned towards the bucket 
you want to pull it towards you to keep it close to your body and then use your legs to pivot. And also for your safety we have used a wheeled cart so you can reduce the carrying time to move it over here. So that is coming from this shelf. It gets a little bit trickier when you're working up high but the same concepts apply that you want to get the weight close to you and then use your legs, kind of set your legs with a solid base and keep it close to your body and then avoid the twisting as much as possible. I have Brandon here who's going to demonstrate what we just discussed. So yes, approach it, keep it close to your body, avoid twisting, Very good. And then can you get something off of the top shelf? Stay close to it. Avoid twisting. Very well done. We are at the bagging area now and this is definitely one of the more physically challenging areas here um, because we have to take the bags off of the, the belt and stack them on a potentially high pallet here. Um, so where we've been working down low before, the, the mechanics kind of stay the same, but it's a, it is a different movement to get things up high. So the mechanics that we have discussed before, we want to still apply. You want to stay close to the bag, get down low to use your leg, keep it close to your body, avoid a twisting motion with your spine. So you use your feet and then you lay it down here. So some of the things that would be easy to do would be to kind of throw it up here and that violates a lot of those body mechanics uh, that I was just talking about where you're getting far from your body, you're twisting and it's a big jerking motion. Um, sometimes when the, it's not sewn just correctly, you'll have to put the bag over here. So I would recommend just holding it close to your body and anytime you can uh, keep your spine at neutral, so it wouldn't make much sense to bend down here with this one if you can keep your spine straight and just walk it over and set it over here. Some of the other things to keep in mind will be to pace yourself with this. So if you have uh, a partner to help you load it up on the pallet, that will definitely give you a little bit more time to recover in between lifts. And, uh, if it's just one person who's loading, then the person over here bagging is going to probably control the pace that they come out at. So keep it at a reasonable pace that you can keep good body mechanics and uh, prevent injury here. Okay, Mike has volunteered to demonstrate the, the movements that we just did. So he'll take the first bag and put it onto the pallet, staying nice and close to the bag pivoting his feet, nice controlled movement, and then keep neutral spine here, pivot with your feet, and walk it over, use your legs to lower it. Good. Sometimes the bags on the pallet can get a little bit too high to maintain the perfect body mechanics, and the safest solution here would to have a team lift. It's going to reduce the weight by half. Um, which will hopefully uh, decrease the amount of strain on the shoulders and back. So I'll have two volunteers come over here and I'll kind of talk through how a good team lift can be. So you're going to have one person on each side of the bag. Uh, the, the hand closest to the bag is going to go under it and the furthest hand is going to go on top so then you can both lift it up and set it on here without crossing your body with the shoulder or doing too much pressure with the shoulder. So I'll just have these two demonstrate that. Good. Yeah, so with that, um, they avoided twisting, they avoided too much crossing with their shoulder, and it was half of the load that it would have been otherwise. Well done. Eric, thank you very much for your insightful guidance in helping us better understand our body's biomechanics and proper material handling techniques. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please consider using this information in your daily work and leisure activities.